and boy say, choir. And I said, what shall I cry? All heads are like grass, and all their glory is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, and the flower fall, because the breath of the Lord blows on them. Sure to keep on grass, the grass withers, and the flower fall. But the word of I die stands forever. Let's, then, let's also turn to 1 Peter, chapter 1, verse 23 to 25. But you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but imperishable, through the living and enduring word of God. For all men are like grass, and all their glory is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flower fall, but the word of the Lord stands forever, forever. And this is the word that was preached to you. Amen. Amen. The subject for the day, how do we feed our soul? How do we feed our soul? In Isaiah 40, verse 6 through 8, and 1 Peter 1 through 24 through 5, it is showing us how to feed our souls by the Word of God. Because the Word of God will last forever. We have nothing in our life that will last forever. Because our material things will stop working, our money will run out, we'll get old, get wrinkled, and we can't do what we used to do, then we die. <laughs> but our soul will not die. So we had to feed our soul while we start still alive on the Word of God. The Word of God will lead us, our soul, into eternal life. Our flesh is like a flower in grass that withers away because our, it's our natural side of us. We are born into sin, and our flesh will lead us to death because sin is death. Jesus came in the flesh to die on the cross for our sin so we can be saved. John 1 verse 14 said, And the Word was made flesh, and the well among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Our flesh can't save us, and we can't save ourselves. So we need to be born again. We need to have the Holy Spirit dwell in us. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. It's a battle goes on with us. Our flesh and our mind and our spirit is always fighting against us. Our flesh is telling us we're too tired to read the Word of God. But the Spirit is telling us to read the Word of God. Matthew 26, verse 41. Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The Spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. We need Jesus in our life and set him as our person Savior. Because he gave us the Holy Spirit to teach us and guide us and lead us the right way. But after that, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father was sent in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. What is a soul? Soul is a life filled with thoughts and action in a human being. God had given us life when he formed Adam. And the Lord God formed man of dust of the ground and breathed in his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living soul. We can't allow our soul to be heavy and burning and anxious of all the time because of our negative emotions and feelings of very our problems. We need to give Jesus all of it. We need to give, give it to him that he will give us rest. In Matthew 11, verse 20 through 29, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Learn from me, for I am generous and humble and hard, you will find rest for your soul. No man or woman can destroy our soul. Only Jesus can. We shouldn't be afraid of what people say or do or try to kill us. Because they only can kill our body, but they can't kill our soul. Amen. Matthew 10, verse 28. Do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather be afraid of the one who can destroy the both, the soul and the body in hell. That is why we need to feed our souls so we can have more Jesus word in our soul and give him reverence at all times in our life. God's word will give us hope and purpose for our life. So we need to receive his word and put them in action for our life. Because God's word will never return empty. It always has a purpose. Isaiah 55 verse 11. So is my word that goes out from my heart. It will not return me empty. But will accomplish what I desire and she, the purpose for which I send it. God's word is a power. His word never loses power. Because when God speaks, his word 
to us and the Father, it can, it can come to pass. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 4, verse 12. For the word of God is alive and action, sharper than any double-edged sword. It will penetrate even to the divine soul and spirit. Joy and moral, it judges the thought and the attitude of the heart. When we seek God's word, we can find a solution to our problems and our needs for our life because his word will never fill up. He is always right. All God's word in the Bible is not a love story. You, it shows us how much he loves us and how much we love him from the Old Testament to the New Testament. Amen. You can see the word of God flowing and it's just showing us how you love, how he loves us. You know, like when you fall in love with someone, you always remember what they've done and said, and then you write the name down over and over and over and over and over. Because <laughs> they love us so much. That's how we should do it. Write the name down, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. How much I love you. I love you. And you go through the word of God with that. Just how much you love us. When we feed on God's word, we need to trust him, whether, whether our problems are solved or not, because we can't see it solved. We had to put our faith in God's word. So again, faith come by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. God's word is the truth, and we should have more confidence in his word. But God said we should believe it, because he never lies. To feed on God's word, we have to read, study, meditate, and put God's words in action in our life. We had to keep our faith in the Lord. We had to walk by faith and not by sight. If we said love God, if we said we love God, we need to love his word. Because Jesus said if we love him, we have to obey his commandments. If you love me, keep my commandments. We should love God's word so much his word will taste sweeter than anything. Oh, sweeter. Because if you really love sweets, and I'm going to love sweets, <laughs> if you really love sweet and how good it tastes, it tastes so good like a good cake or a lemon pie. Right now, it tastes so good. But if you think of the word of God, how sweet it is. How it gets out in your heart and your soul. It is sweeter than a cake and a pie. Psalm 131, 19, verse 103. How sweet are thy words that you might taste? Yes, yeah, sweeter than honey to my mouth. We can love for love because God's words. It's a fresh enough to spread the gospel so the soul can be saved. The preached word will feed our soul and change us to be a better disciple. Oh, yeah. We'll be willing to go out to make disciples by telling the good news. We will be walking in the spirit and not in the flesh because the flesh will fade away, but the spirit will lead us to eternal life. All because of God's word is feeding our soul. How do we feed our soul? We can feed our soul with the word of God and the preached word. Or we can feed our soul with the word of things, so, such as money, car, or other material things. This choice is up to us. Our soul is very important to us. So we have to be clean. We have to be careful what we feed it. Because if we feed all negative attitudes, unforgiveness, hatred, judging one another, jealousy, we will be walking in the flesh, yeah. and flesh will lead to death. Oh, yeah. But we want to feed our soul with love, joy, peace, forgiving one another, loving one another, helping one another, giving an encouraging word to one another. Then we'll be walking in the spirit, and the spirit will lead us to eternal life. Our soul we need to be fed every day, not just on Sunday, when we hear the preach word. When first starts off when you read the word, feed on the word, you're feeding it as a baby. A baby, you don't give a baby bread or meat. You give them milk. So when you start off feeding God's word, you start off with milk. You start off with the basic things. The foundation is salvation. The forgiveness, the repentance. That's where you start off at first. But then, once you become a grown person, you don't want to just drink milk. You want to feed on the meat. That will give you a material, a spiritual maturity. Then you feed on that meat. You're so much chewing on the word of God that how can change your life. You feed on his word. How can he direct us and guide us in the way he wants to go. You feed on his word. He'll give you gifts that he calls you to do by his word of God. Because in Hebrews 5, verse 14, But strong meat belongs to them that are full of age, even those who, by reason of using, have their senses. Essence are discerning both good and evil. When we feed on God's word for our soul, we can receive God's word. When John Bassett, John Bassett, Bassett was preaching the wilderness, was preaching the wilderness, he was saying, repent, repent, 
He was warning them about Jesus Christ is coming. He was, a, he was telling them that somebody is greater than him is coming. John the Baptist was baptizing in the water and for repentance. But Jesus came to baptize with the Holy Spirit and fire. The preach word would give us warning signs. Preach word would show us goals. Preach word would give us ideas of what he wants us to do. That's right. God's word would build to us when we need to hear his word in time of trouble. Because we have feed our souls with his word. Even when we get old and have all times. I have seen people who have all times. Don't even know their name, don't know the people around them, but they can speak God's word. Just as clear as ever. They can tell you what God's word is saying. They'll spoke scripture for scripture because they can't know God's word before they got old. And once you get old, you might not know who you are, but you know Jesus. <laughs> and that's the greatest person to know. And our prayer life, if we think on God's word, the word of God will build to us what to say in our prayer life. We can always pray because God will build us the word of God. Because in all the scriptures, in some of the scriptures in the Bible, has prayer, and you can just speak on prayers to, to yourself and to others. When we feed on God's word, it will give us peace, comfort, and joy. Because when we think of the goodness of God's word and how Jesus has done all he had done for us, don't your soul require hallelujah for saving your soul? Feed on God's word is like having a baby. I don't know if it's not for men, but it's for women. It's like having a baby. When you're having a baby and it's crashing, and you feel the pain and how the pain hurts, and it just hurts and hurts and and to go home for hours and hours and hours. You're like, when is this pain gonna go away? And so eventually, when it's getting time to push up that baby, even though it hurts and you went through all that struggle, but when that baby come hurt, ain't that that happiest moment of your life? How you see the beautiful eyes and the little hands, the little feet. How they're so cute. You don't forgot about that baby pain. <laughs> you forgot about the pain. It's just like that. So let's put it to feeding God's word in this way. If we truly get the zeal and desire to feed God's word every day of our life, yes, we can see trials and tribulation. Yes, we can see killing and problems going all around the world. Yes, we see that. But that word of God is in us. And that one day it will birth and give us joy, peace, and victory, even during all the messes going around right now. That that word of God is going to show us that you can still rest in peace in his word. Because we know what he can do in our life, and his word is in our soul, and we can still rejoice in the Lord. We can say he is the greatest God, and he is worthy to be praised. God's word is the truth, and his word lasts forever and ever. So won't you want to stand on God's word? How God's word is always there. It never ends. It never decreases. It's how awesome God's word is. It's a nursery to your soul. You know, like, you had to eat every day. If you don't eat every day, you get hungry. You had that hungry pain. Mm -hmm. And so what do you do? You go and eat, right? So don't we get a hungry pain for God's word? We had to feed our soul for God's word so that soul can profit, so it can, can birth earth into what he wants us to be. And how we can spread the gospel. How we won't have no problem telling people how great God is. Because we're feeding God on God's word in our quiet time, in our private time. And then when we go earth in public, God will feel that word and tell someone who do not know who Jesus is. He will tell you that word because you are preparing yourself before you even go right there. Yeah. I so will last forever and forever too. Just like God's word will last forever and ever. So we need um, we need to feed God's word and Jesus is the word. Because one day we'll get to see him face to face. It will be a great joyful time to see Jesus one day. Because then we can forever worship him and praise his holy name. That all the words will come forth. It's like the birth of all that you had learned and stored. Even though you don't get a whole understanding of God's word. You don't know everything about God's word. The more you read, the more you get understanding. 
And you can read one scripture one time, the next time, the next week, it's a whole different building telling you. So it's awesome how God's word will build to you. But one day we will see it face in face. We will need the Bible. We will see Jesus and God Almighty one day. Don't you want to be there in that moment of time? Because it is coming. One day, we all got to close our eyes. Yes. So don't we want to be in the presence of the Lord forever and ever? So he is an awesome God. Amen. Amen.